You're watching The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, Envy is... Envy's still in Houston, right? Envy's trying to get back from Houston, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. He stayed there for whatever reason. Well, we got uh, uh, the legendary... Families. <laughs> Wyclef Jean is in the building. What's up, my family? He just put out an EP, Juvert. No, Juve. Juve. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Haitian, okay. man. What's that you mean? You don't have to be Haitian. It's, okay, it's Caribbean. It's, it's, oh, it's uh, Caribbean? It's straight up the night before the carnival in Brooklyn, baby. And it's all right. Leave it up to me to, to come up with a word, make it hard to pronounce. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, Juve yeah. is like, first of all, so much fun, because I'm from Brooklyn, too. So yeah. Juve is like a big deal. But they also tell you when you're young not to go. Out yeah, yeah. That night. yeah. Didn't somebody get happen. shot there last year? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's <laughs> part of the carnival. You can't get shot. Mm-hmm. You gotta be careful. Brooklyn's a tricky place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They stay out all night. What is, what exactly is Juve for? Because I've always Juve is sort of like it's the turn up before the turn up. Mm-hmm. So we figure like you know we're gonna be on that parkway that whole day. So that whole night before you drinking, you partying, you having a great time. You know you just watching out for danger. It's sort of like a big tradition like within carnival. Like, cause the idea, like, is like Haitian carnival is like literally you party in like three days or Trinidad. It's the same vibe. Could you please first... tell E1 nobody makes CDs no more though? <laughs> like, That's right. Come on. But, but listen to this, right? Right. Watch this. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. Just look at the charts, right? Around the world, maybe here they don't make CDs, but this right here is already top five in Canada, mm-hmm. and in Quebec they buy CDs. So you still got to make the physicality of certain places. So even though in the states. Like my daughter ain't buying no CD. She just hit that. <laughs> that she turned on that smartphone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happens is like there's still like so when when you still because we still have fans that are our age that has carnival and different people and those people are still like CD covered gotcha. like in certain countries. But here in the states, they definitely don't make them. I know you. You don't got a CD player. No, I don't even know. I have one in my no car. Though. I always pop in. I okay. always actually listen to CDs in the car. Okay, but y'all got the smartphone. Just hit but, iTunes. And I could say, and I could save it into the hard drive in the car. Yeah. But I still it. prefer digital, just because you know how many copies are only built for Cuban links. I had to buy. How many copies of Illmatic I had to buy? Mm-hmm. Well, digital just makes everything like just easier. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Now I heard an interesting story on the Combat Jack show. Fat Joe was on. And I, I just thought it was interesting. I actually listened to it yesterday. He said that you walked into Big Pun's funeral playing a guitar. So you bought a speaker and a guitar, and you walked in playing. And 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 and, and the thing was, it's supposed to be disrespectful to play music when a Spanish person dies. So when they when you walked in, everybody thought you was tripping, but you just won the crowd over, had everybody crying. Well, I mean, there's two things. It's it's if you come pure and you come with your heart, and you come raw. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, my connection with Pun was I just remember us in the islands mm-hmm. and I was basically on piano and he was freestyling. He was like, go ahead, twin, play that piano. So it was like, at the end of the day, I felt like if there was anything that I could do would be just to really just show up with a guitar. And I knew like if I was pure mm-hmm. that, cause I didn't go to really win the crowd over. I went to like really just pay tribute. And, um, but once again, everyone has their tradition. Mm-hmm. And you know, literally like probably like a minute in, it was sort of like, because you're just trying to touch that spirit. It's an emotional time. And um, and definitely uh, the crowd was uh, like, uh, even like Fat Joe, I just remember everybody just being in tears. Yeah. But for me, I just felt like that's what I could do. Just, you know, like knowing him and like my short time spent with him, I was like, he would probably want me to show up and be like, yo twin, Play that guitar, sing something, you know? It was and like what a song gift was of, it? A gift Fat, of music. Yeah, Fat Joe said it was Maria Maria. I'm like, that don't sound like a funeral song. Yeah, no, it was like a mixture of just like the, you know, I was, I had a song that I had wrote, and then inside of it, still like, with, within like the Maria Maria, you're not just gonna be like, Maria, my, you know? Mm-hmm. It was, um, it was just to say like, but, but the, the story of Maria is still a deep one, because it's like that whole West Side story, you know, gang story, this gang versus that gang. So, um, but it was just more an emotional moment of time and just wanted to capture something. Cause you know, for me, it's like, if I get called to sing at a JFK son funeral, you know, and the only two black people there is me and Muhammad Ali. Mm. And then big pun, it's like at the end of the day, it's the same respect for me mm-hmm. because it's like, I'm from that hip hop culture. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's no difference to me. So I honor that. I would have to honor that the same way I honor the Kennedy thing. And I figured um, the family and the culture would respect that if you just come pure. Because right. if you don't come pure, you know, 
it would have been a different story in there. Absolutely. You feel me? Now, why is this an EP? Because there's 10 songs in it. I know there's 13 on the deluxe edition. Isn't yeah. this a full album? No, it's an EP because half of it is in acoustic form. Mm -hmm. So you have remixes of similar songs. Um, and, and it's crazy because literally like in seven years, I haven't been in this commercial space. Um, so it's, it's nuts. We was talking about streaming and digital. The song Hendrix is already at 10 million in streams. Um, so the analytics of the kids are just so real right now. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, um, I remember I was having a conversation with Envy, mm -hmm. um, you, and then the idea was like, I remember when Envy came to the studio, it was like, no matter what, just don't stop putting out music. Cause the way that it works right now, you literally have to have something out every couple of weeks, you know? So in taking that advice, I mean, really, we really back, like right now we're on 16 different charts around the world, mm -hmm. like top 50. It's, and this is just an EP. It's different so, with guys like you, though, because it's not like you're still trying to be relevant. You're a legend already. Yeah, but, you know, I was having that conversation because, um, so I go in the studio with, with Young Thug, and I was telling people what happens is when the kids bring you in, like whether if it's Drake or whatever, you, like you were saying, at the end of the day, you still just have to be you. I think the trick starts to be when you try to adapt to what the kids are doing. Absolutely. And I think the reason why they're coming to get you is because right. they heard the score, they heard the carnival, they're like where that is. Um, and I think sometimes, a lot of us, sometimes we lose ourselves, you know what I mean, in that, because you still want to stay irrelevant. But these kids really are looking up to you because of these albums that you've had. And Young you know? Thug had to reach out to you, right, to clear. Yeah. Had, so you can't just call a song Wyclef Jean without nah. clearing it? No, you can't, you can't. It, you know, because it's my name. That. So so basically, and it was- And the song could be about something you don't want to represent. Yeah, but it was crazy because I get the call and um, Leo was tracking me down, like, yo, Young Thug is looking for you, you know? And, um, and I get to Atlanta and, you know, he's like, yo, you see bloody my shirt, my, my tat, Haiti, my daughter, Haiti, my project, Haiti. Man, I wish I was from Haiti, right? So <laughs> it's like the side of history that he chose to know, it's almost like you got kids studying you without you even knowing. Mm. And then in the next couple of years, it, there'll be a kid who's doing what you're doing, and then he'll tell you stories about you that you can't remember. And I think that's the impact that we have, and then we understand like our responsibilities, because we, we street people, mm -hmm. hard street people, but we never talk about it, and we never glorify it. We more like say, look, at the end of the day, y'all could get up from the streets and do something positive. You know? now, now let's have a hip hop conversation. I'm sure you've had this a million times. Why the hell does Young Thug remind you of a modern day Tupac? Well, you know the internet switch bait people. Okay, right? so, so what did so, you really say? He's like, say? read the whole article and yeah, see Yeah, but what I, I did mean. say that, but of course you have to say that because of right. the, the viewers. In context. What, yeah, of course, and then, it so past the switch bait, which whatever article did that, I hope they got their hits and made their right. money. Um, the 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 part that I was talking about was too in context was in meeting Tupac in Europe, the the combination of the thug life, the Haiti tat, mm -hmm. and the part of history that he chose to know, but people would consider him a bandit because he don't choose to know the other part of history. So I was amazed by Thugger's love for Haiti in the 1804, that revolution. I'm not expecting him to even have that like out of everything I'm expecting him to know, it's not that part of, cause that, they don't even teach you that in school. And then with Pac, the the Black Panther, the, that side of it, because you know, you got a side where you fight in the street mm -hmm. and then that revolution side. So in context, I, it was in a music conversation mm -hmm. and then the work ethics that every time I land, I gotta be in the studio, I gotta find a studio. And going in, with, with Thugger, he was like, look, I just learned how to do trap music, Clef. Let me show you what I do. That's how I knew I could have put him on, I swear. Man, dude played like 40 records that got nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> mm. And it's that work ethics. That right. was the content. So it had nothing to do with music? At all. I mean, okay, it's, two, gotcha. it's, it's definitely two different generations of music. You know what I mean? Like, we're from the Pac generation. But because people are so sensitive when it comes to Pac, when it comes to Biggie, so it's like when you say something, you have to put it in context. Right. It's like the other day, uh, the Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King comes, you know, it's his birthday, and I'm like, all lives matter. Oh, Ooh. man. Oh, yeah, that was it for you. Yo, Delete. when I tell you, <laughs> yeah, when I tell you, it went, it went. And then I don't really, I don't delete nothing. 
<laughs> the reason why I delete that is because, first of all, if you're gonna put it out there, you gotta be willing to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. Our country was so divided, and I was like, I ain't about to go into no Twitter war. That's not what I do. I deleted it, right? But I didn't stop. I deleted it so I could take the kids or the people at the time that was so sensitive. I was like, look, here's an interview like a year and a half ago. Look at this. What am I talking about? Yes, Black Lives Matter. That's an automatic This is a what thing. are you doing for me right now type of game, Clef. They don't but care about that. But you understand why people are sensitive about that. Yeah, but what happens is sensitivity is good, but past, sensi past the emotion, it's about policy and legislation. So at the end of the day, my remarks was based on Martin Luther King. And for Martin Luther King to get what he had to get to, even within his speech, he had to unite everybody. He was an engager, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can he, we introduce your protege, by the way, because I don't want people to be like, oh. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, so so Jazzy, who's from the Bronx, she not here yet, she got lost. Um, <laughs> she went to the wrong location, yes, everyone does and, that. Um, and this is Allison, <laughs> Allison, um, church girl, um, similar to Whitney, like church, that's the whole vibe, I'm a PK. And um and she's here. Sorry, I forgot my guitar. A lot of pressure, lot of pressure. Allison. <laughs> we, we need we need to know if you can really sing. All right. Yeah, in order to do that, we ain't gonna put no beat, no nothing. I'm gonna do like you, like I told Beyonce, four girls in the hotel. I was like, sing me a church song. You sure you don't want to stand up now? Cause think about it, Beyonce, <laughs> Lauren <laughs> Hill, Shakira, Mary J. Blige. Thirty seconds. And Wyclef said you're a church girl, right? Ortiz. I'm a church girl, so I'm gonna sing a little gospel. Into the mic, let's do this. Yeah, put your lips on the mic. All right. That's how you that become a star in this business. I'll sing a little loud. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. I, I know I've been changed. Oh, I, I, I know I've been changed. Oh, I, oh, I, I, I know I've been changed. The angels in heaven done sign my name. Wow. Okay. I didn't expect what all that. What you going to say, Charlene? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, who is that singing? <laughs> wow. Okay. So in a way, indirectly, you can thank Rihanna, too, for um, making all this happen the yes. way it did. Thank right, you, right. Rihanna. That's good. <laughs> all right. I think you might have something here, Claire. All right. Thank Go you ahead, guys. Allison. All thank right. you so much. Now she, she, she acting shy now, but wait till she get a hit. <laughs> it always starts off like, like that. that. <laughs> uh, they be like, yeah. Next thing you know, the hit is like, all right. Me want some pink pillows in a dress room. <laughs> me want seven Oreo cookies. Well, I'm telling you, man, you start eat blood clot chicken wings. <laughs> and now you want pink pillows. <laughs> Let's talk about because your album is out on an independent label, but um, you own this label with a woman, and you said support women also when you buy this EP. Yeah. So first of all, this is big for us. So it's an independent label owned by a woman by the name of Madeline Nelson. I met her. Who, Yes, incredible CEO, been responsible for a lot of us in the industry. So she was like, look, she wants to do a label. I was like, look, I got a technology software solution where I can make anything sound super stereo. Like, and super stereo is just saying like, when, when you watching the Super Bowl in 5.1, whatever, mm -hmm. I have a, a software that you can do that with just a headphone and no speakers. Or I have a speaker that you could do that without having five speakers. Right, so she was like, "Look, I'll help you with the software solution, and I got this indie, and you could be my Smokey Robinson." Mm -hmm. And she was like, "I have all this young talent, so we just fought, we joined forces together." I respect her because it's an all female label. They turned down crazy distribution deals, so it was like at the end of the day, her distribution deal with E One. Like a lot of people don't know, E One's a billion dollar company. So without the artists getting that money though, yeah, but it's a once again without an artist getting that money, but it has multiple parts, right? Mm -hmm. So you have music, you have film, you have, so an artist has to understand if you enter in a conglomerate, right? So the beautiful thing about Heads Music and E1, it's not an artist partnership, it's a, a label to a label partnership. So it means like if we got movies we wanna develop, mm -hmm. we could bring that. So it's almost like a, a limitless bank, but you just have to prove what you're doing and gotcha. you need that. And I feel with the movement of everything going on, this is exciting. For you to be charting in 16 countries and it to be independent 
within a movement, I think artists like me, this is great. This is what we look forward to, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So you I love streaming now because oh. streaming wasn't around clearly, of course, when you first came out, but it's made a huge difference. Let me tell you how crazy it is. Terminal 5, we promoted our show a few days ago. Mm-hmm. Packed. Like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it wouldn't be like that. Like, really just through the no social No flyers media, in the street, no posters you, you on the wall. just straight up, you bang your social <laughs> media, your analytics, you target your crowd. And next thing you know, it's a wrap. So when do you think artists made more money? Back when you first came out, like with the Fugees and the Carnival, or now? Yeah, because Master P was here. He said artists don't make money no more. You hear that, young lady? Artists don't make money anymore. Allison. <laughs> Allison. <laughs> <laughs> so it's two <laughs> things to it. <laughs> it's two things to it. You know, artists can make money. But the way that you make money, now it's converted into streams, right? So my daughter, she's going to stream it before she... She, she buys the concept of the Spotify, right? The Apple, so she gets whatever music she wants. But they can't physically download you, mm-hmm. right? So this is why Live Nation are throwing big deals out, right? So at the end of the day, for an artist to really bank big money these days, new artists, um, you have to score like a Live Nation deal or touring. Because your, your, your money now is made through the merch, the touring, you know, the, your brand. Right. So money is made through your brand. So you basically got to build a brand. Do you think it's fair that a lot of times labels get a piece of that also? Because they have to make money too since peop- artists aren't making money off a of straight album sales. Man, listen, I was coming from New Jersey and I get to the George Washington and there's a toll booth there. They told me to pay some money. I said, why I got to pay some money? They said, because you live in this country. That's it. So at the end of the day, if we as a label, we create something, you know, then you have to get a piece of what you create. But... The difference with Heads Music is the sense of it, because we come from that artist background, we ain't ripping no artists off. Now, now it's been 23, I think 23 years, they said, since Blunt and On Reality? Yeah, so so this is the 20th year anniversary of the carnival, right? Okay. Last year was, yeah, to your point, yes, yeah, 23, Blunt it. Damn, it seemed like that was, I don't know why, it seemed like Blunt it was, like, was, was, came along way earlier than the score did, but it was only three years? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was the three, yeah, definitely. So Blunt it was so Blunt it was ninety four. Okay. Score was ninety six. Okay. So like what two years? Two years. Yeah. You got any me- any favorite memories from those times? Yeah, definitely. I would say um, the greatest memory for me f- was um, Blunt it on reality, the album, because I wasn't producing it or part of it. We were signed to Cool and the Gang, basically mm-hmm. Le Jam, <laughs> which was a great production company at the time, and so. Because we had guitars, we had drums or whatever, so when we would show up, people would be like, are they hip-hop kids until we get on the mic, right? right. So I remember, man, we had a big show <laughs> Uptown Harlem, man, with Wu-Tang Clan. Jesus. And um, uh, Smith & Wesson. And then they put the Fugees on the bill. You feel what I'm saying to you? So I- I'll never forget that, man. So we get there, and could you imagine like that kind of show? You you could imagine. And we showing up with like drum sets yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. I already pre-warned my crew. I was like, look, man, set everything up, but leave it close to the exit. So it's literally like the drum in, in the middle. You know, we make sure that the drum is far, because if something's going to happen, you got to be ready to take your instruments and move. Man, you thought y'all going to get booed? No, no. We I knew that there would be... It was, something was going to break out that night. Hey, right? Between Wu, Smith, and, like, Fuji's. It was just through the mix was like block to block. Something was going to happen. And yes, it surely did happen. Um, <laughs> all I, ju- I just remember, man, if Method Man could remember this, man, I just remember that it was a crazy show, but a fight broke out. It was almost like Israelites, Wu-Tang Clan, you know, we in the middle of this, you know. Um, I told my manager, uh, my tour manager at the time, Hassan Sharif, Muslim brother, I was like, look, man, just go get the money before we even start the show. Yeah, mm. please, so we can run and out. just get out of here. Um, I remember that, and, uh, and then we get outside, and then I remember ODB. And because now it's a big fight outside. And ODB was like, man, I love the Fugees, but I'm going to whip somebody's ass, man. <laughs> it was almost like. <laughs> what? Yeah, because it was like, it looked like. And then Prize was on the side. Prize had a bottle in his hand. Prize cracked the bottle, you know, did the whole movie thing, you know, the whole, the whole shot us thing. Yeah. Who I want? Who I want? Who I want? And, um, so y'all was fighting the Wu Tang or y'all was just there? No, it was, it was because of the tension. Everybody, it was almost like a Mexican standoff. You gotcha, know what I'm gotcha, saying gotcha. to you? Um, and I think at the end of the day, the tension was because the fight broke out, and a lot of I don't think people got paid that night. Mm. But 
we definitely took our money early. I went in the venue early. I scoped the place out. And I so did that early intel. Money. Like, yo, this this don't look good right here, you know? So that was incredible because years later, now I'm in the studio with ODB. And I'm trying to get him to remember that story. And um, and people was like, yo, it's going to be difficult working with him. Like, you ain't going to be able to get a verse out of him. Mm -hmm. Only RZA can get it. And he, he comes in the studio when I was doing that Ghetto Superstar for Prize. And he literally goes in the booth. And, you know, I'm a little nervous because dude's like, yo, you can't get a verse out of him. You might be good, but you're not that good. Man, literally, man, the dude gets in the vocal booth and he's like, so I have to hear this dolphin frequency for three <laughs> minutes. But I'm acting like nothing wrong. You feel me? I'm acting normal. I got the game normal. I got that Super Bowl face game face. Yo, and then Did you tell minutes, him it was hot? That's hot. That's no, hot. I'm just listening because I got to see what's going. Because if it's whack, I'm going to have to say something. Right. Man, three minutes in, this dude just started to spit out mm -hmm. of nowhere. And that's when Riz is talking about his genius. That's sort of like how his genius was. So for me, that was one of the most memorable things I can remember. Man. Yeah, he's With like a time. singer, freestyle singer slash And he was rapper. like, oh, my, my. Uh -huh. he was doing yeah. all of that when dudes was in trying, you know? <laughs> he thought he was more of a soul singer. Right, he was yeah. like a singer. That's what they're inspired by. That was like Praza's only hit. Um, no, nah, he had, had Praza had more He hits. did? We're going to rock them through. Electric, Electric Avenue, right? Electric Avenue was big. Mm. That was a big It was song. big. It was okay. big. It was big. I remember seeing the Fugees perform with Outkast. Oh, that was an incredible show. I like, went to I that remember, show. Oh, I remember yeah. that was... It was like Goody Mob, Fugees, and Outkast. That That's was classic. Show. That sounds classic. It was just nuts. Yeah, that was a that was an incredible show. I was like, we're not missing that one. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, was Lauryn Hill chronically late to Fuji shows? Like as she is now? No, no, no. Nobody nobody could be late to no Fuji show. <laughs> um, you got to be on time. I'm just saying like back in, you know, it's, it, it's different. Um, back in the days, like, you know, because um, you're promoting, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to be focused, like, uh, when it came to that. So everyone was basically on time. But, of course, this is years later, you know? What do you think Lauren ranks as far as greatest of all time? Because I, I, it comes a point for me where I'm like, look, man, The Miseducation Lauren Hill is a phenomenal album, classic album, but we might be overrating it. Overrating. That album, oh, no, not, 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 not the album, but overrating oh. where we put her. In the greatest of all time, with that one body of work. Um, well, no, I disagree. I think she's one of the greatest, and I think that what happens is top five though. And come on, she was on I, the Fuji's albums also. You can't forget all yeah. that work too, so not just her why, solo this album. Is why, this is why I rate her top five female within our generation. Mm -hmm. Mary J's up there. This Absolutely, is, this is big. So the reason why I rate her like that is because a body of work, one body of work, like Jimi Hendrix, he died like early twenties. But whatever he left was that situation. Do you notice how sometimes the legends pass and they're not popping, like, within our times? And then all of a sudden, the minute they pass, we look at the iTunes, whether if it's George Michael, and everything goes up. Mm -hmm. And you see how that's always determined by that one or that two album. Or Amy Winehouse. Or Amy Winehouse. Back by that black. one or that two album. So I think what happens with that miseducation is like that Bar Marley, that Exodus, or that Fuji's that score. No matter what happens... The legacy factor, sometimes we forget it because we live in, but the minute people pass away. And me, okay, let me vouch for her. Because mm -hmm. I was in the studio with Whitney Houston. I recorded Whitney, and I was in the studio with Lauren. I was in the studio with Beyonce. So all of this, I was in the studio with Shakira. There's just something about her that is just the it factor as far as like me being a PK, and when someone sings, you could feel that anointment. She had that. Mm. And you mentioned Jimi Hendrix also. So what about this um, film? Are you work you're working on a, a Oh, Hendrix? so so that's based so, off the song though. Yeah. So what yeah. we did was the song Hendrix is a sound I created called Acoustic Trap. Mm -hmm. We have two versions of the video. So we we did a video. So we have the the four minute version that we put on World Star R I P to Q, and then we have the 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 movie version. Right. So now when we shoot, we shoot a film version that we can have like a seven or eight minute version. And that version is basically about the trap. Mm -hmm. Like what happens when you make that choice. Um, we had my man, um, you know, Michael, we had Tasha. Michael my, K. Williams. Yeah, Michael K. Williams, we had Tasha, who starred on that, so you could definitely see that. So that that's the idea of that joint Hendrix that's on the EP. Allison, do you feel pressure? Because you just heard three of the most phenomenal mm -hmm. women in the game ever that Wyclef has worked with. Lauren Hill, 
Beyonce, Shakira. Shakira, you worked with Mary J. Blige. Do you feel that kind of pressure? At first, yeah, um, I did. But I, right now, I just feel honored. Like, it's an honor. So tell us about your situation, like how you guys crazy met. Crazy situation. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so I actually worked for Heads Music. Um, I was in, uh, in administration, and uh, they had asked me to go to the studio to demo a song. Yeah. And the song I asked So you worked in administration, and they yeah. asked you to go demo a song. So yeah, the secretary. They, knew, they yes. knew that I can sing, but they never heard me sing, like, mm -hmm. at all. Um, so, but hold up. Yeah. The demo that I wanted her to do, because I was at the World Cup with Rihanna, mm -hmm. and then she was like, oh, I'm glad you're back into music. You know, we're going to catch a vibe. So I was Rihanna demo said that or Allison? No, no, this was Rihanna. Okay, okay. We was in, when we was at the World Cup, she's like, I'm glad you're back into music. She came to the dressing room and everything. And then, so I was like, I have a vibe. This would be good for Rihanna, so I'm going to demo this and send it to her. You could go on, right? I just want to say Mind that. Mind you, I didn't know any of that. So you told before. everybody you could sing, though. You were, yeah. So like, everybody knew they it. They knew that that was my passion. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to do. So uh, the CEO of Heads Music, Madeline Nelson, took me to the studio, and uh, I demoed the song for them, and, like, that was that. Yeah, and I'm actually on, yeah, I'm actually on the EP on track number five, Little Things. Okay. Mm. So, yeah. That's, so, it was God, like, honestly. Yeah. But once again, that's the magic to me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like at the end of the day, if it's dope, like it's dope because how are we going to discover who is the next if every time we do it? Because from these demos, if we could put these artists on these demos and they're incredible, we, 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 don't, we could keep it moving. So that's the idea. I really believe that magic still exists outside of the YouTube. And that's sort of like how we doing it, the reverse way. So you would have never stepped up and been like, hey, Wyclef, you know, I would love to get in the studio and work with you. I mean, I've, I like mentioned that, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not like that type of pushy. pushy. Like, yeah, I was like, you know, I have a, a strong foundation of uh, spirituality and, you know, mm -hmm. just believing that, you know, if, if it was meant that God was going to just open the door and make a way in. A lot of pressure, though, because you could either be Lauryn Hill or Claudette Ortiz. Right. <laughs> Right. Wow. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she had a little moment, but you know it was very fleeting. True. Wow. How did you feel about Claudette? <laughs> Clef, did, did you rank her? So, so I tell you, man, you always catch me, man. So, <laughs> so, so what happens, right, with City High? I felt like a lot of times they didn't get their break they were supposed to. Cause it's sort of like you know how people was attached to the Fuji so much, yeah. and it was like, oh man, they go Clef. Clef got a scheme. He trying to create another Fuji's. We ain't gonna go for that because we love the Fuji's. It's almost like when you trying to create something. It was hard. And guess what? We went through that curse too. Cause when we was trying to come out there, it's like ah, oh, they trying to be like diggable, diggable planets, planets, even right. before they even mm. hear the music. Mm -hmm. So I felt. So my thing was like, okay, you know what? I could felt, because they had some great records. They had a that, huge record. That's right. So then I was like, you know what? Let me do what I did with Lauren musically, and let me put her on the record Two Wrongs. Because they said Two Wrongs don't make don't it make right. Because so, right. mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let me start splitting up this thing so they could be like, okay, she has that thing. You know what I mean? Um, and then past that, you know, there's, once again, there's multiple disciplines in this business, and you have to trust me 100%. If you don't trust me 100% and you let your guard down, something's going to happen. Lauren, trust me 3 trillion percent. Mm -hmm. Whitney, 3 trillion percent. Shakira, three, Beyonce, when I was like, this is how it's going to go, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Mm -hmm. she wasn't like, okay, this is how it's going to go. So I think with the city high, there were so many people after I was like, the group has to be these two guys. And she was on the side like her, quiet. And I was like, what she do? He said, she sing. I'm like, yeah, sing something. I said, oh, we got a star here. So after I created that formula, mm -hmm. everyone was like pulling and touching. And I think that's sort of like what happened. But once again, I still rate that as far as like one of those talented groups. But, um, Yo, e. you know, that's not part of the... Um, that top five legacy we talking about. Did you know about all the? Oh, I'm sorry. So did you know about all the turmoil going on in the group though, with uh, Claudette, with the guys and everything? weren't both of them smashing her? No, it was one at a time. <laughs> uh, like well, first she was. Well, with... I knew about 
the turmoil, the turmoil. That's how you say it in English. Yeah, I said turmoil. The terminal <laughs> five show. <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, I knew of parts of it, right? But I just knew that what would happen eventually was so you had one kid who there was an alcohol problem, mm -hmm. and that started a little early. So once again, as a mentor, I'm trying to say, you know, this can't happen. You know, you got another kid who she's with, you know, and it's like, whoa, business and pleasure, trust me, that doesn't work out too well. Um, yeah, I read your book. Yeah, but once again, <laughs> what ended up happening is these mistakes are made over and over again. So if you don't have the right mentorship, if I ain't had the right mentorship, I wouldn't be here. Right. So at the end of the day, you go and make mistakes, mm -hmm. but I can't take somebody to rehab. They parents gotta do that. Right I could up. be like, yo, don't do that, you know? So I just feel like they were young, and once again, when you're young and you become successful, it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you got to have great people around you. The What I really felt happened to City High, in my opinion, was the tug of war, them getting all pulled different places because they all had their own talent. You know yeah. what I mean? And I felt like Claudette was in the middle and she got the bad rep. They, the they, so she didn't trust you 300%? No, no. I, I wouldn't say that she trusts me 300% because whichever female put their hands in my career like say you know what we gonna go like i'm telling you like when i go in with whitney i'm shaking man like this man she's like come on baby just tell me what to do i'm like but, man but there's this nothing is wrong with the Houston. artists having input if they don't agree either and yeah saying, but i don't want to hear from claudette ortiz if whitney listening to me and beyonce listening to me if all these greats listening to me and then you buck up i'm it, like wait a minute young because is there a question of like well you know you're you're young and maybe you hear like different things and you might be like well maybe i could try it like this like some type of input. No. Once again, so my 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 statement ain't ba based on input. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you like I'm a sponge. If you ain't talking to me in the studio, if you twenty something and you ain't talking to me, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Cause um, Quincy, Michael Jackson talked to Quincy Jones. Right. He told him, but Quincy was still Quincy. But that's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is you got to let me be the pilot, and you have to trust that. Cause when the plane is taking off, you have to trust the pilot. You can have your opinions. But once again, you know, if you look at the wall and you say, man, this is 100 million worth of work strong, there got to be something going on. So I respect the talent of Claudette, I res just like I respect the talent. But at the end of the day, they got to be, uh, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So you don't think like Lauren, come on, vocally, mm -hmm. she's like, look, I'm hearing like a thousand voices in my head for killing me softly. This is what's incredible. Let LeBron be LeBron. You be the genius. I'm not trying to take away from your genius. Mm -hmm. As a coach, though, I'm just like, okay, right. we got to win the championship. And that's why I come in to guide you. And so in that sense, I felt like the Fugees trust me 100%. And we got to where we had to get to. Now, when you found out Claudette was having sex with both members of City High, did you ever think to yourself, well, why she ain't give me none? I'm the guy that's putting this all together. It didn't happen like that. No, because as you know, as an OG, mm -hmm. I don't have those problems, right? Gotcha. Because of the prior mistakes that I made, there was no way that I was going to embark in that situation. Again, gotcha, right? gotcha. Because now I was older, I was wiser, you know what I'm saying to you? But if I knew that it was going to lurk within the situation, maybe I could have intervened and had a conversation. But as everything was going on... It all just all felt natural mm -hmm. until that success come and they all started getting pulled in different places. Why do you think with the early Fuji stuff, you get more credit than Salam Remy? Well, I was just, I was with Salam. We was talking, mm -hmm. We I was on Apple and I was saying, man, I was like, look, I was doing an interview with Salam and I said, Salam was my mentor, right? I even went further and said, before Salam, Khalees Bayan, who actually said, this Fuji should be a group from Cool and the Gang or there would be no Fugees. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like, I was like, to your point, I was doing this interview with, with, with them. Before the Fugees, me and Salam sat. So, so Salam was like, yo, Clef came over, we talked. Then after we talked, I saw we was in the same wave. Then I bought Lauren and Prize. Salam basically was like, look, we going to dumb it down. Like, we ain't going to, look, y'all just too talented. All these guitars, right. all of that, we could get mm -hmm. to that. But I just know y'all spitters from the block. So Clef going there, throws on this beat. 
and then you know and I st- I literally rhyme for 15 minutes mm-hmm. and I think like 7 minutes it's like the original URL like bars wow. like you just going in I you know and I think like 7 minutes in and I'm like yo Lisa, can I get you know and Lauren goes in 15 minutes prize goes in 15 minutes it's like okay bye we headed to Europe we leave Salam sits there like some Eric Sherman red man vibe like Eric used to do he literally Cut puts this genius thing together, and that becomes nappy heads. So now, when I saw what Salam was doing, I was like, hold up, this is nuts. I was like, I can't just be using the drums and all the live instruments. I got to mix the electronics with it. So now, nappy heads blow up. Now I'm working on the score. Salam will tell you. Whether if it's ready or not, any record that I'm doing, I bring it to Salam Mm -hmm. because I think he should be touching it. Right. Because Salam did Fujila, right? So Salam was like, you're going to do Fujila. So I bring him the records and I'm nervous. And I'm like, yo, what do you think? You got it, kid. I don't need to do nothing to this. So Salam was, that's what I said. We all need a mentor. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, if I went on some, I'm going to have my opinions. But at the end of the day, I'm like, that guy is that guy doing that, those records at the time. So we developed that big relationship. And I think, once again, it's up to us within history and legacy mm-hmm. to say who our mentors right. is. You know, I was even saying the Fuji La beat was for Fat Joe. Mm. Like, we went in, we heard, boo, do, 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 you know? And Lauren was like, ooh, la, la, when you to be number 10? Yo, and Salam, man, he voiced us on that, right? Because, you know, it was sort of like, you know, back in the days, it was all about the voice. And you know what I mean? I have a rhythm. All right. I <laughs> mean, 10 versions. I just read them, right? So you go ahead and you do the voicing. And it was like afterwards, you know what I mean? I like, yeah, you know, this was Fat Joe's beat, you know? So shout out to Fat Joe. Fat Joe man. turned it down? Um, well, when we heard the beat, we didn't hear Joe's vocals on it. Oh, Joe already recorded to it. No, we didn't hear his they, vocals on it. it. Oh, gotcha. But remember, that era was like the versions. So remember like the yacht, boom, 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 boom. It yeah, could yeah, be yeah. one beat and 20 people on it. And Salam was doing all the rhythms back then. Right. So it was sort of like, he probably had a, it was not till afterwards, it was like, yo. That was supposed Joe to be. Joe was like, yo, <laughs> you know that was my beat, man. You know what I mean? So whether if Salam was like, yo, Joe, this going to be your beat. Um, but like incredible, incredible stories like that. So he's, Salam is like a mentor, you know what I'm saying to you? And people don't even know. I met Quincy Jones, man. I was like 17, barely 18 years old, like doing a play. And I was like, yo, I'm a student of jazz. I look up to you. So once again, if you don't have those people that make you feel like you could do it, you don't think you can do it. So do you think it's because you were an artist? Yeah, I feel like Salam likes to play yes, the yes. background too. Yeah, but I played the background once again in the Fuji's. The star was Lauren. That's true. All I did was apply the same method. I was like, okay, think about it. The magazine said the girl should go solo. The guy should stop rapping and vanish like Menudo. I took it to the heart. Every actor plays his part. As long as someone was listening, I knew it was a start. You forgot what the papers were writing? They're like, man, these two guys need to go back to Haiti or get on the banana boat. The girl is <laughs> wow. dope. She need to go solo. <laughs> these guys are dead. And then, so well, we I'm used like, to try Back in the day, we used to try to figure out what the groups do. So it's yeah, like, but, oh, he do the beats. Yeah, but once again, right? But it wasn't like, we had the internet where, you know what I'm saying, I could do a beat and be like, yo, I just did Ready or Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so everyone was looking to your point. They was like, who's the star? So everyone was focused on the star and not the producers. While they was doing that, the rise of the producers was starting to rise. And then the producers were like, hold up, I could be a star too. So then the producers were like, let me start rhyming. But now me conceptually in my brain, I think of it as a producer first. Mm-hmm. Who can I put out? That's that's always how I mm-hmm. think, and that's why I'm excited about Heads Music and E1. How do you um? So when you did the carnival, do you think that kind of like leveled the playing field? Because Lauren was the star. Then yes. when you did the carnival, it was like, okay, now I'm a star too. I I did. I was like, when I do the carnival, people will figure out in order for you to the sustainability of this game ain't what you could do for yourself. It's can you keep? Could you make people money? Can you keep creating stars? So when I did the carnival, everybody had the awakening now and said, oh, that was the kid doing some of the beats in the score. Then they went back and started reading. They was like, oh, he did Ready or Not. He did Boom, Boom, Boom. And he did the carnival. Product manager like, yo, listen, I got these four girls. <laughs> They're named Destiny Child. So now 
it was so now they started looking at it like, oh wow, he actually is a producer. Cause the key to producers, you don't put yourself in the front. And then so the carnival gave him that landscape and said, okay, he can actually create more than just himself. So I think if I was going in there like, oh, I'm about to be a star now, it wouldn't be different. It was more like, cause man, family, if you listen to the carnival, ain't no way I was trying to be famous. A body of work in five languages, Calypso, Soca, Reggae. You know what I mean? Dudes was like, yo, don't put no Crayol. I was like, yeah, he's like, I'm doing my shit New York sound fizzy for the Zoes. Like, original. Uh, man, this this joint done sold seven or eight million with five languages. Guantanamera. People was not playing Spanish music like that on no radio. I, I bought Celia Cruz in and did all of that because I was like, I have to do a body of work that live as a piece of art. Mm -hmm. So it was more like I was thinking in my art headspace. You know what I mean? And that's how it happened. A lot of pressure, Allison. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure. Just a little. <laughs> now, you, you also had a commercial in the Super Bowl. Did you have a song in the commercial in the Super Bowl? I saw you tweeted about it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely did. We had, um, it was, because uh, what it is, is keep in mind, so for me, um, along with everything that I do, I do jingles, mm -hmm. and I do scores, and I do all of that. And I think because of anyone who's listening to this, fam, Sometimes you could make these days you could make more money off of jingles, right? And 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 doing movie stuff than just putting out Especially music. Especially for a Super Bowl commercial, yeah. I would so, assume. So so for me, <laughs> so for me, where I'm going to in the future right now is um, I want to get involved with like more movies and more like commercials for movies because I think sort of like that's where the future was at. So actually, I was just up in Sony Music the other day, you know, pressuring my publishers like, yo. You know, the next level of cleft, this is what I want to do. And a lot of people don't even know. That movie, Hotel Rwanda, mm -hmm. I got nominated for a Golden Globe Wow! for that movie. So it's like a lot. I say, you know what, man? Maybe I should start being like one of them rappers. Everything I do, like... Tweet about it. Tweet about it. Or, or say, <laughs> but what was funny, I was like, look, man, we from hip-hop. And then it showed me like, holy crap, you don't just have to be doing music. You actually could get nominated. So when I'm sitting back watching John Legend and Common get an Oscar, this is what I'm talking about. The playing field is so wide open because when we be like, okay, um, even though artists ain't making money the way that they used to, right? The access and the success factor when you become a brand, you straight up set. There's that that shocks me open. that you're just realizing that, Clef, because you crossed over a long time ago. But guess what Quincy says? The day that I finally realize that is the day that I'm finished. Mm. Because when you hear Juve, mm -hmm. fam, Yo, and, and, and y'all raw, just do me a favor. When you get a time, zone out. I'm and gonna when you zone day. out, when you zone out, and look, at the end of the day, if you're like, Clef, this is garbage, man. Start all over again. Because you will say that if you don't like it, because that's how you are. Oh, yo, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. We've always had this conversation. Because what that is, is you're going to be like, this kid is like he's just starting again. And I think the day we don't have that hunger and that feeling is the day we over, you know? Now, you got a song on here called If I Was President 2016. Are all your political aspirations done? You ran for president of Haiti once? Yeah, I mean, funny, the other day, so we had Terminal 5, and I went a half in the show. I said, look, man, Jay-Z got his president. Obama, you know, like when 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 Jay Z says, "Yo, Obama gonna show up." Obama shows up, you know what I mean? And I said, "I love Obama, but I'm from Haiti, man. My president, Sweet Mickey, man. If Sweet Mickey shows up on the stage, and out of nowhere, Sweet Mickey walks out, place goes flat." <laughs> so at the end of the day, my political aspiration was because I felt there was absence in my country. Mm. So whenever I feel there's absence, I'm gonna step up. It's like Donald Trump gets elected. The next day, the women hit the streets. They want certain rights. They don't want to be absent. They're not saying we're looking for a revolution. They're saying if you the president, this is what we expect. You know what I mean? So I'm going to continue to be an artist. I'm going to continue to serve my country. And I don't feel like we have absence right now. So it's all good. All right. So Juve. Hey, I, one more question. Ju When's the last time you've been to Juve in Brooklyn? Um, four years ago. Okay. Yeah, I love Juve. So this year, I'm going to definitely go to Juve. <laughs> we look out for that. And um, Oh, on this EP real quick, uh, my man Walk the Moon, mm -hmm. Nick, who sings Shut Up and Dance With Me. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, we did a joint, but his father just passed two days ago. So RIP to your dad, family. It's a hard thing. I lost my dad. Number love. Well, Clef Jean, Juve is out right now. 
Thank you for coming, my brother. Thank you, family. Thank you, always. Allison, for joining us. Too. Allison, you. look Allison forward to hearing from you. Thank you. A lot yes, of pressure. A lot of pressure, Allison. A lot of pressure. <laughs> That's good. Hey, why would you not want that? It's the Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.